There we go. So this session will be recorded and later uh, today, tomorrow, we'll send a link to everyone who's attended so that you can have a copy of that. And then we'll also you know, feel free to pass the recording on to others who may not have been, been able to join from your organization that may benefit from the information we're going to share. Um, right now, I've muted everyone. Feel free to use the chat window throughout the session. And then towards the end, we'll unmute folks. And we're welcome to have a conversation about what we're talking about today uh, interactively. So with that, we'll get started. Um, in way of introductions, my name is York Grow. I'm the Duncan Parnell MGIS Solutions Manager for our, our company. Um, and then I will turn it over now to Jeff Smith and let him introduce himself. And he's going to carry on this presentation for us. Got it, Jeff? Work, am I unmuted now? Yes, you are. But we can't okay. see your screen you yet. See my screen? We cannot see your screen. All right, how about Okay, I hit a button. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let me, sorry. Let me go back and just ensure you have presenter roles. Yep, you're still presenter. Okay, for some reason my screen stopped sharing. All right, stand by. Let me remove presenter and then give it back to you. Okay, sorry. There we go. There you go. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. I believe I dropped. So thanks, York. Um, everybody, thanks for attending our webinar today. Uh, as York said, uh, we're going to review uh, Trimble Waters Trimble Unity application. And just a brief introduction of myself. I'm Jeff Smith. I'm the regional manager for Trimble Water. And I've been working with Trimble for about 20 years now. I'm based out of Tampa, Florida, and I cover the Southeast. Um, today, we're going to go over an introduction of the Unity platform and its two key elements. It's remote monitoring and work management, and the valve exercising app that we have that's built to be integrated with the HWOX, that falls in line with our work management capabilities inside of Trimble Unity. We're going to go over the key features and benefits talk about some resources that you have to follow up after our webinar so that you can have some more information. Uh, as, as York mentioned, it's going to be recorded and shared with everybody. And then after I uh, go through the PowerPoint, I'm going to do a brief demonstration to show you the application live. So to start off with, the platform that the Valve Exercising app that I'm going to focus on today for EHWOX is built on top of Trimble Water's Trimble Unity platform. And there's two key elements of, of uh, capabilities inside of Trimble Unity. One is remote monitoring, which gives you a live real-time view of how your uh, water or wastewater network is performing at any moment in time. And then there's Trimble Unity Work Management, which is a workflow-based app that helps manage a variety of different types of activities that are found at a water or wastewater utility. Um, Trimble Unity, uh, before I go further, first of all, Trimble Unity is, a, is an Esri GIS-centric platform. Uh, it's built on uh, uh, GIS tools made by Esri as well as Trimble. So everything that you see is GIS-centric, and it's completely compatible with your Esri GIS. Um, 
I'm going to briefly touch on uh, the remote monitoring capabilities before I roll into the application of uh, valve exercising. But just so that you know that the platform has uh, has a breadth of capabilities, not just mapping and work management and, and exercising valves, but it also has the ability to uh, uh, monitor your system at any moment in time. Uh, Trimble makes uh, a variety of different types of data loggers. I believe that we have over 25 today that can be installed anywhere on your water or wastewater network to let you know how that your network is actually performing. And it lets you be able to do that because it's a data logger that's wireless enabled through cellular technology. And it's an intelligent data logger that stores data all throughout the day. And uh, that information, if there's any problems that are noticed in real time, it can get an alarm via text message or email. Some of the real common applications that we're able to monitor through the Trimble Unity platform are water flow, uh, fire hydrant monitoring, pressure monitoring, water finding out water hammers and any other type of transient events, uh, water level inside of a tank, a pond, um, a, a, a well, aquifer, a lot of different things like that. And then we also have leak detection tools that will actually listen for leaks of all different on all different types of pipe types. Um, those are our main applications for water. Um, remote monitoring on the wastewater side, we, we have uh, tools that will help you monitor rainfall, open channel flow, letting you know what's happening directly inside of a wastewater pipe, the, the flow level inside of a manhole, the velocity of water going through a wastewater network, and also be able to, um, tools for being able to monitor anything that's going, inside of a, uh, going on inside of a lift station or a pumping station. Uh, a quick view of this is Trimble Unity Remote Monitoring. You'll see a lot of these screenshots, mainly because we're talking about Trimble Unity with valve exercising. But this is a look at the Trimble Unity Remote Monitoring Cloud, where you can see your monitoring devices and how, it, how your network is performing. You can dig into the data and be able to see real precise graphs of exactly what's happening at any geographic location of where you have one of our data loggers installed. Um, from a mobile work management standpoint, which is the other element to Trimble Unity, which we're going to talk about today, um, is, is a collection of apps and, and workflows that are built to help you streamline your asset maintenance and operations. Uh, getting rid of paper, uh, getting rid of spreadsheets, having a very GIS-centric way to be able to carry out inspections and work orders and things of that nature. Uh, Trimble Unity can work standalone or it can be integrated with a back office system such as our Trimble CityWorks product or SAP or Maximo or your billing system. It's architected in a way that it can work with many different platforms or it can work by itself. So on to the uh, EHWOX valve exercising app. So this is a workflow that's built to manage all types of valve exercising valve inspection activities. And if those activities include valve exercising using an EH Watts valve turning machine, Trimble Unity is integrated with that. But it's not limited to only valve exercising done by the EH Watts machine. It can handle a whole range of different types of inspections. And you can embed this capability into other applications that are available to you in Trimble Unity, and I'll get to that uh, towards the end of our PowerPoint. So the valve exercising app, is a GIS-centric way to be able to capture valve ex exercising data using Trimble Unity. Trimble Unity is directly integrated with the HWOX valve exercise machine in the field. And its real purpose is to eliminate really time-consuming post-processing data from that happens during the valve exercising workflow that you do today and being able to streamline that so that it can get into Trimble Unity and to your Esri GIS very seamlessly with very few button clicks. Um, a real value to the, uh, to the application is it requires a Windows 10 device, but you're able to exercise and control your valve operating machine made by EHWOX through a single device, single software, and all of that one single solution can capture all of the data that you need in one spot. So, if you have an existing EHWOX valve operating machine, um, it could require to use a different data logger and download the information at the end of the day 
uh, upload and, and through a series of processes trying to get that information that you captured in the field back into your GIS. There's a lot of file imports and exports and things of that nature. But since Trimble Unity is very GIS centric, you capture this data once into the field. Um, a supervisor has the ability to look at what's been done and be able to approve uh, that work and then it can go directly into um, your GIS. Um, uh, one capability that's inside of not only capturing the valve exercising details, it you can also use the valve exercising app to update your GIS or to capture a new GPS location with a very, very high accuracy. So whether you have an existing um, uh, location of where a valve is, you can use that as the geographic location or you can use a Trimble GNSS receiver like a Trimble R1 or R2 and be able to capture a very, very high accurate GPS position. It's not required, but it is part of the application that you can update the geometry of your existing GIS, or you can create a new feature. Um, not only can the application um, create a new GIS feature or edit an existing feature, it can also update tabular data as well. So any attribute data that's found in the GIS, you can, you're able to update that as well. So, um, I think I skipped through a couple. All right, so um, the way that it works is that you would connect Trimble Uni, a Trimble, um, not a Trimble, but a Windows 10 mobile device. We recommend our Trimble T10 rugged outdoor tablet, and it connects to the valve operating machine using Bluetooth. Um, some, some older models of EHWOCs have just only wired connections, but this particular application requires a Bluetooth connection, but it can, cl it can connect to any Bluetooth enabled EHWOC device. Um, so just to review a couple of things about the application is that um, it's your GIS enabling your, your entire valve inspection workflow. If you do have an EHWOX valve machine, you can directly integrate with it and capture the information automatically into a Trimble Unity form and update your GIS. Um, you only need a uh, single device and single software. Uh, being that it's GIS centric, you can also visualize um, your valve inspections that need to be performed within a GIS map. So it's very map centric. And you can plan your work and be able to see what valves have been exercised and which ones need to be exercised or which ones have had problems. All of that is visualized inside of Trimble Unity on, within your GIS. Um, and one of the biggest business reasons for this is that if you are attempting to gather this information in the field, uh, it's, it's a one-stop shop for being able to collect the information, streamline that data collection and so that it goes directly into your GIS instead of having to, to possibly work with a couple of different softwares and, and, and methods to be able to uh, download and import and export data. This is all very seamless. You collect the data and it updates the system. Um, so what's needed for this? Um, I'd mentioned before that um, that we require a Windows 10 uh, mobile device, and we recommend our T10 tablet, but this can run on any Windows 10 laptop. The reason why for the Windows 10 requirement is that the controlling software that is uh, manufactured and supported by EHWOX, which is embedded into Trimble Unity, is called Vitals. Vitals will only run on Windows 10. Uh, at this time, uh, it, there, there are some, it does have capabilities to run on Windows Mobile. It's an older operating system, but for Trimble Unity to work, it requires Windows 10 and Windows 10 version of Vitals. So you need a Windows 10 tablet or laptop, and it needs to have Bluetooth capabilities. It will connect to the valve exercise machine, whether it's an EHWOX trailer mounted or truck mounted valve exercise machine, that's Bluetooth enabled. And then optionally, if you do want to use the workflow where you can update your existing GIS or create new GIS, you do that through um, uh, either an R1 or an R2. And um, uh, just depending on the level of accuracy that you'd like to achieve, uh, determines the type of uh, GNSS that you would get. So a couple of screenshots have taken you through the workflow. So, First of all, you would launch into the valve exercising app and you would plan your work uh, uh, visually within Trimble Unity. 
So there's a variety of different ways that you can schedule your work or plan your work. You can create a job that has many valves in it, or you can have one job for each valve. Um, um, this can be done through a spatial selection, through a query, um, through, a, through an advanced search or through a simple search. Um, geographically, what I'm showing on the screen here is just a few valves that need to be inspected. You can use our polygon draw tool and be able to select the valves that you'd like to insert into a job. Um, we also have a color coding mechanism that you can look onto a screen and be able to tell which valves have been inspected and which valves have not. Uh, being that this is cloud, this is a very multi-user environment. So if you have one or if you have 20 different people that are doing valve exercising, all of this is aggregated into one spot so that you can see, so a supervisor that's planning work can see what valves have been inspected and what haven't. What, and I'll go through some of this whenever I do the demo. Um, so the first step is on your mobile device, you would launch Trimble Unity in the Valve Exerciser app, and it automatically begins uh, downloading any new jobs that have been assigned to that particular user. Um, this, uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can trigger a synchronization. One, you can set it to automatically synchronize, or you can push button and press synchronize. And what this does is it downloads all new jobs that a supervisor has assigned to you, or any new jobs that another user has created and assigned to you, um, and it will synchronize all of those jobs and bring that directly to your uh, to your device. Uh, now, at the same time as this uh, synchronization occurs, any changes to your GIS will be uploaded as well to the user. Um, so, depending on when the user last synchronized, we have a mechanism to be able to tell to be able to pull the right data in so that you have the most recent GIS data as a background. Um, but whenever you do the synchronization, you get all of your jobs. So on this screen here, it lets me know that my sync was successful, and I can see that I have two jobs uh, listed on the left. Um, I also will have a map being able to show me where all of my jobs are located. So now that I have a list of my jobs, I have two jobs here, I have a couple of different ways to get to the job site as well as to the asset. So one, I can simply hit uh, navigate to the job site using driving directions. And what this will do is it'll take your GPS location of wherever your Windows 10 tablet is, and it will use the GPS on board and it will, it will navigate you to the job site. Now, once you get onto the job site, you have other tools so that it will take you and use asset-based navigation. So one gets you to the job site and the other will use your GPS to direct you how many feet or how many inches that you need to move to so that you're on top of the correct valve. Now this requires GIS information, but if you don't, Trimble Unity can help trim, uh, true that up, especially if you have good GPS uh, connected to this. So two ways to be able to get to the job. Um, once you open a job, for example, I'm, I'm opened up a job called Century Farm Lane, and I can see that there are five valves that I need to inspect. And it gives me the option of being able to look at the uh, asset ID of each valve. So I can see that asset uh, valve number 4439, 3507, 2922, they're all in this list. And I have a couple of different options. I have the ability to simply click the exercise button, or if for some reason I cannot access the valve or I can't find the valve, uh, maybe a car is parked on top of the valve at that moment or, or I can't find the valve, I would simply hit the skip button. But the workflow is really built to hit exercise and you can work from this list and it'll pull up the valve exercise form inside of Trimble Unity. Um, <clears throat> um, this is a map view showing me all of the valves that are related to this particular job. And, uh, and they're color coded by status. So the bubbles that you see, the blue bubbles that you see in the map, in, in the map view, um, it rep the blue bubble represents that this is a valve that has been scheduled to be um, uh, exercised, but it has not been exercised yet. If it was green, that would let me know that that particular valve has been exercised. If it was red, it would let me know that there was a problem or that it was skipped. So there is a, um, uh, there's a common um, color coding scheme to Tremble Unity. Blue means something that's been planned and is awaiting action. Something that's green lets you know that the job is complete or the, or the asset itself has been inspected. So 
there's a couple of different pages worth of information that we have in our out-of-the-box valve inspection or valve exercising app. These can be completely configured by you. There's tools built into Trimble Unity so that you configure what questions are asked uh, in the valve inspection form. However, we give you a range of different types of very common questions that are asked during the valve inspection and valve exercising process. And this demo is showing you the out of the box um, tools that are that are ready to go as soon as you were to purchase this. But just so that you know, it can be configured using some administration tools that come with Trimble Unity. Um, on the uh, the first form, we have well, we have a couple of pages. One is our valve accessibility page, which we're showing here. Another one will be the valve information page. This is information that's pulled directly from your GIS. Then we have a, a page that is completely related to the exercise itself and integrating with the HWACs. We have a concession assessment and then we have an attachment page. Um, attachments are pictures and the torque charts and different things like that that are, automatic, that are created whenever you do the inspection. But first we're gonna start out with the valve accessibility. The first question it asks you is if you wanna capture a GPS position. So Trimble Unity will be connected directly to your GPS, whichever GPS that you choose to use. And that can be an R1, an R2, or whatever GPS is, in, is embedded into your Windows 10 uh, uh, device. Um, as I mentioned before, this step is not required uh, because a lot of you probably have very high accurate GIS um, that was, in, and you've used GPS to, to create the, this data. So you do not have to use this, but if you do want to be able to uh, capture a high accuracy location, you would simply hit the capture button. And whenever you capture any data inside of Trimble Unity, it will give you about 10 different metadata attributes showing you what the quality of the GPS um, um, data that you collected. Um, so if you were to use the, my screen here is actually showing me capturing a position just using my laptop and it's not very accurate, but if this was a R2 centimeter, it would tell you exactly how accurate that particular um, position was. Um, the next step um, is the valve accessibility page. Now this is some information to where uh, that you can capture information about how accessible the valve was. It, this really is meant for if it was accessible, if it was not accessible, but it helps somebody know the next year whenever you're planning. So if you were to go out into the field and find a valve and and it's, and it's hard to find, or maybe there's some type of structure built too close to it where you can't actually access it, you're actually able to record when you're out there trying to do the exercise if the, if the valve was accessible. And if it wasn't, if you were to select the valve accessible, no, it would ask you a series of questions to be able to qualify why it wasn't accessible. Um, on the valve information um, page, this is just a quick view where you're able to see um, the actual GIS data that this particular valve is related to. Um, this is really for viewing purposes, but if, any, if there is a problem, if any information is incorrect here, you can update your attribute information. But it's really for just verifying that you are at the right valve, but if you find anything that there's a problem, you can make a change. Um, so this is the uh, valve um, uh, exercise page. Now this is where you start um, capturing the information of, of how was this valve um, uh, operated. So you have the ability to select the operation mechanism. So was it a hand wheel? Was it a two inch square operator? Whatever type of, 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 of mechanism is used to be able to turn the valve, you can capture this here. Um, then you have a couple of different ways to be able to say what is the, uh, the main valve exercise method. With this particular tool, we're going to select WOX truck mounted. However, if a, um, if a WOX truck mounted exercise machine was not used, you do have the ability to choose from, um, from a hand or, or a different other mechanism that you use to do it. But for this demo, we're going to say that it was a WOX truck mounted. And when you do that, a new form pops up and you would hit what a, a blue button that, that appears that says exercise. And whenever you click exercise, it will launch the WOX vitals controller. And this is where you will actually control the exercise machine to take it through a full operation of the valve. So you're gonna fully uh, uh, close it, open it again, and all of the information that's gathered during this process happens uh, in the vitals controller. So 
once the valve has been fully uh, exercised, uh, you close the, um, uh, uh, the WOX controller and it will automatically populate all of the characteristics and all of the data that's being stored on the valve operating machine of the time that the, the entire process goes through, it automatically populates the Trimble Unity form and this is represented here. So some of these automated um, um, information that is gathered is the start of the operation. So that's the time that you hit the exercise button. Um, and then the end of the operation. So we're actually able to get a very, a very precise reading of how long that it took for somebody to operate a valve. And this can be used to be put back into some work management systems or even Trimble Unity so you can keep track of time and material and things of that nature. Um, but most importantly, it, it it captures the number of turns that were that the number of turns that the valve exercise machine actually performed, and it's able to capture during that time what was the minimum and maximum torque and what was the final torque. So while it's doing its exercise, the EH Wax machine is, is is storing and gathering some very important data. Um, very granular information and Trimble Unity makes sense of that and we're able to update that information into our form as well as be able to present a, a, a graph of the actual operation. So if the operation took five minutes to do, it'll show you a graph of, of the torque that was related to every single turn. And this is uh, an example of the actual torque chart that is created from the data that we capture from the exercise and machine. And this is stored as an attachment inside of Trimble Unity, and this form can also be stored inside your GIS if you wish. Um, while you're out in the field, you're able to capture pictures and uh, uh, maybe a before and after, um, uh, or if you just want to simply take a single picture, um, Unity has that capability so you can take a picture with your mobile device, or you can choose from a variety of, of pictures that might be in your uh, camera roll. Um, Unity is, like I mentioned, Esri, uh, Unity is very Esri GIS centric. We take advantage of the ArcGIS operational dashboards and things of that nature, and I'll show you that in our demonstration here in a minute, but uh, just wanted to show a screenshot of this, but it might be best if I show that uh, live. Um, before I go to the demo, I, I do want to talk about how this valve exercising workflow can be embedded into other Trimble Unity applications. Uh, these might be applications that you build uh, on your own inside of Trimble Unity because we give you a very wide range of tools to build your own specific apps, or Trimble Unity or one of our implement or Trimble Water or one of our Trimble Water implementation partners can build a custom app for you. But one of our apps is called Leak Repair. And leak repair is very much aligned with uh, valve exercising because um, if you do identify a leak and it needs to be isolated, you do that by exercising and shutting down the valve. So Trimble Unity has the ability to work with the geometric network um, for being able to do any type of tracing and things of that nature. But if a leak has been reported, um, uh, uh, an office or a field user has the ability to create a, a, a leak repair job. And in this uh, sample I have here, this is the leak location. So somebody creates a job and says there is a leak uh, located here. Somebody goes into the field and investigates this. And while they're doing their investigation and they, and they identify that it's a leak, hopefully they're using uh, Trimble Water's uh, leak detection tools. So we have several different types of leak detection and leak detection monitors, but possibly they went into the field Maybe they visually confirmed that there was a leak, or maybe they used our leak locator kit and electronically was able to say, yes, there's a leak and this is the exact location. Now a repair needs to happen. So whenever you create this repair, the person in the field, after that they have identified and have confirmed that there's a leak, they can perform what we call a valve isolation. So they can touch on the map, and it will go and it looks at the network, how it's built, and it will identify the valves that need to be turned to uh, isolate that particular section of pipe. And when you do this, it gives you this uh, isolation overview page. It'll tell you if you need to isolate this segment of pipe, it'll take two valves to operate. And if you do operate those valves, it will isolate, it'll take seven customers out of service. 
And that's what this particular page is doing, but there's more detail to this. So this is a map view. Once again, we're showing the, the bubbles that are represented by what valves need to be isolated. So I can see the leak location, uh, and then I can see the two valves that need to be shut down. So this, once again, can be incorporated into the to the Trimble Uni valve exercising app. Now, maybe you have time to send your EH Walks valve machine, your valve truck out here to do this isolation, but you might use the valve exercising app just because somebody needs to, to isolate this fairly quickly. So the same valve exercise app that I just showed you can be used here, but if you do have the time for your valve truck to get out there, um, it will step them through the same exact workflow that I demonstrated before. Um, this shows you, um, uh, uh, the valve list. So you can either work from a map and, and work the valves that need to be isolated because not only, it's not always as clean to be able to say that there's just two valves to isolate. Sometimes it might be six valves to isolate. Um, but this is the valve operation list to isolate that. So here it says um, you have the ability to say, yes, I'm going to close this valve or possibly I'm out there trying to turn the valve and it's unoperable. Um, so we have different ways to be able to, to, to code what's happening. But if I click that it's unoperable, it knows its geographic location, and it will skip and create another trace, and it will go the next valve down or upstream to be able to isolate that. So this valve list may change if the valve is unoperable. So Unity is very smart like that. It takes advantage of a lot of things that you put into your GIS, and namely uh, the geometric network. Um, this is a customer isolation list. This is the number, that, this is the map view of the customers that would be affected if you were to operate those two different valves. And we have a list of those customers. So if in your GIS you have any uh, customer information and have any critical customers that are, that are flagged in your GIS, they would show up here. But the person in the field and in the office has the ability to see this. So that's just a real quick takeaway of of extra capabilities that can be added in to Trimble Unity. Um, uh, the previous workflow I showed there takes a little configuration, but it's completely capable in the same uh, uh, platform that we just showed you. So um, this slide, these slides will be shared with you, but I, I mentioned how you're going to be able to stay in touch with us, and um, uh, the, uh, the main way to do that is through our LinkedIn page. But um, since we're taking uh, questions at the end, I'm going to jump right into uh, a quick demonstration and then we'll have some Q&A afterwards. Um, York, I'm going to switch over. To... Looks good. Okay. York, will you confirm that you, can you confirm yeah. that you see my Trimble Unity? I sure can. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> so this is Trimble Unity. Um, I'm going to show two different things within Trimble Unity today. Um, Trimble Unity has two components to it. Um, there is Trimble Unity Web, which is, is access to a Google Chrome, Chrome browser. So Trimble Unity Web, and then there's Trimble Unity Mobile. So this is a mobile application that I have running on my Windows 10 laptop. Uh, because the Valve Exercising app only runs on Windows 10, it makes sense that I do this on my uh, laptop. So you're going to see me toggle between uh, Google Chrome for Trimble Unity Web and the Trimble Unity Windows 10 application. So what is the difference between the two? So Trimble Unity Web is a supervisory tool. It's, it's, it's web-based. It's, it's um, on a Google Chrome browser. But what it's meant for, it's meant for the supervisor, the GIS manager, the operations manager. It's somebody that wants to see the big picture of what's going on at any particular moment in time. So whenever I launch the Valve Inspection app inside of Valve Exerciser app inside of Trimble Unity, I see a map with all of my different Valve Exercise jobs that are happening at any moment in time. And they're all color coded by status. Once again, it's following that rule that I'd mentioned before between blue and green, uh, except there's another step in here, which is purple. So blue, jobs that are blue represent jobs that have been planned. Jobs that are purple mean that there's actively a person on site working the job. And if it's green, it's meant that the field person has completed the job and it's waiting my review and approval. 
Now, this approval step can be configured and be removed if it's too, too much for you, but we recommend it because it's the ability to take a look at Trimble Unity, this cloud-hosted tool, to be able to review and do QA and QC before you actually want it to update, say, your GIS or your GIS in your work management or CityWorks. This can actually be used. So Trimble Unity Web is made for the big picture view. So this is a map view uh, showing me a list of all of the jobs that are happening, who it's been assigned to, uh, the location of all of the jobs, but we also have a dashboard. So if I wanna launch the dashboard, this will, so it, depending on the user, they can, they can launch Trimble Unity and go straight to the dashboard. This might be the view that they want to, that the person wants to see. Um, but this is a dashboard that's actually pulling data from Trimble Unity and presenting it here. And it's in, this is using like ArcGIS tools. Um, or you can use the work order, uh, not work order, but the actual map view. So if I want to take a look at a job, and um, I'm going to use this one. This is, uh, a job called DPI VE2. So this is showing me information about this particular job. This is the name of the job. Um, Jeff Smith is on site on June 24th. Shows some other basic information. It'll show me all of the valves that are uh, actually part of this job. So there's actually 42 valves that are in the single job. Now Unity has the capability of have a single job for each valve, or you can have one job and have multiple valves. It's it's really up to you how you want that how, how you want that to do how you want it to work. Trimble Unity can support that. Um, so this is showing some, some basic information about this. So these are all the valves. Um, I can see that there's been a couple of valves that have already been inspected here. Um, uh, I have a note from my supervisor asking me to get this job done before July 3rd. I can see that there's been two valve exercises that have happened. Um, you can, inside of the job, whether you're looking at this in the office or the field, uh, you can um, upload attachments. So this is, uh, this is a, 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 an SOP for valve inspection. So you can launch this. So you can attach a PDF or any type of file to the job so that you can see this in the office or in the field. Um, this is trying to launch a PDF here. It's fairly large, but... Um, I'll show this on the mobile device. But if you put an attachment here, this could be PDFs, CAD drawings, whatever it may be, standard operating procedures, and it's all related to this particular job. Um, there's also an audit trail. So this shows me, so anything that happens from the time that a job is created to the time that somebody goes and says that they're on site and they're preparing um, all of that is tracked through an audit trail. So, um, so this job was created uh, on 624 at 1206, and then it was actually um, somebody did a valve inspection at 624 at 1212. Jeff Smith did that. Um, uh, valve number 4051 was happened at 1223. So, anyways, Trimble Unity. This this Trimble Unity web has uh, it, it's, it's more of the high level, so that you can see a lot of the details of what happens in the field. It's not made for actually carrying out work. It's made for um, it's made for actually uh, managing the work and, and, and looking at the results. If I want to see a, if I want to see all of the valves, I can simply hit this button here and it'll take me to the job site. So these for this particular job, um, these are all of the valves that need to be inspected. So if they're blue, they have not been inspected yet. If they're green, they have been inspected. Um, if you want to look at um, um, at one of the valves that have been inspected. So this is this particular one. I can look at the valve inspection form. So somebody's already gone out and exercised this valve, and I'm able to take a look at the details. So this is the form that somebody captured. So this is a GPS location somebody captured. They answered the questions if it was accessible, what type of surface was it, um, was there traffic control needed, needed, was the chamber dewatered, was it cleaned? Lots of different questions that are here. And, and like I mentioned before, these can be configured by you. If you if this if this is too much information, you can you can control this. But um, I can see that this is the actual valve exercising page. Somebody did this with the Wax truck mounted. It started at 624 at 1220, it ended at 1222. This was the number of turns, uh, the maximum torque, uh, the final torque. Um, was the valve operating completely? Um, then we have some condition assessment information that was filled out in the field. Uh, we can see the actual torque chart that's related to that particular inspection. And we can look at a, at a picture that was taken. 
Um, before I get to the mobile device, um, there's a couple of different ways that, well, I'll tell you what, I'll go to the mobile device now to actually show you the, uh, the tool. So if you watch Trimble Unity, so now I'm showing you Trimble Unity Mobile. This is our Windows 10 app. So this is Trimble Unity Mobile is made for actually carrying out work. Um, Trimble Unity Web made for managing work and um, supervisors and things like that. But for the people that are actually capturing data, that's Trimble Unity Mobile. So I'm going to key in my username and password. Um, it'll bring me to a list of different types of Trimble Unity apps that that my supervisor has assigned to me. Um, so there's a couple of different things I do at the organization, but the one that I'm going to show you today is the Valve Exerciser. So I'm going to launch the Valve Exerciser app. So instead of seeing all of everybody's work, I only see the work that's assigned to me. So I can see I have three different jobs. I have one that's been assigned to me that I haven't started yet. It's represented by blue. And then there's two that I'm actually on site working at any moment. Now, if this was real, hopefully I'm not working two jobs at one time. Um, but if I'd like to see, um, for example, this job, DPI, Valve Exercise 2, this shows, shows me some details about, these are the same details that were found on the web. Um, tells me that there's 42 different uh, assets that I need to uh, uh, inspect. I can look at the map view on my screen. So this, I can work from this. So since this is GPS enabled, I could see myself walking around on the map. Um, or I could use my driving directions or my asset navigator uh, directions. Um, if I wish to exercise a valve, I would simply hit exercise. And then this will ask me, do I want to capture a new GPS location? Or do I want to use the map to actually capture my location? If I don't select any of it, it just uses my existing GIS location. I can fill out that the valve is accessible. If it's not accessible, um, it can ask me some questions. So they're fairly smart forms. If you answer a question, it may prompt you for more uh, questions. But I'm going to say yes, it's accessible. Uh, is traffic control needed? Uh, so all of these are just basic questions. Um, I have valve information form here, so if I needed to update any attributes, I could do that here, or I can leave it alone. It's mainly made for so that the field person knows that they're at the right valve. And then I can get to the valve exercise on screen. So this is um, how we actually say how we're performing the inspection. So I can say the mechanism is a square operator. The method is there's several different things. If I'm, doing, if I'm exercising the valve by hand, I would select this. If I'm using a WOX truck mounted, I would select it. And then I'm going to exercise the valve. So whenever I hit exercise, it will launch the WOX controller. So during this time that it's actually, that it's capturing this, this is how, if somebody has an EH WOX valve truck right now, they know how to use the WOX controller. So they do, they use this, they use the WOX controller just like they always have. The only difference is, Everything that's being captured is not being stored in vitals. It's being stored directly inside of the Trimble Unity form that we have behind the scenes here. Uh, since I'm not actually cap, I'm not connected to uh, a valve machine. I have a little simulation file that's actually running in the background here. Um, and if I was connected, this wouldn't come up. But just just so that you know, I'm, I'm um, this is just for demo purposes. So whenever I fill that information out. Um, and close the controller, uh, whenever I close the controller, it automatically calculates the start of the operation, the end of the operation, the number of turns, the maximum torque, the final torque, and then a couple of questions that are very important. So uh, this is something that, uh, what type of valve exercise and type did I do? Well, I did a full exercise. What was the final position? Opened or partially open. Uh, was a main valve exercise. So these are questions that help support the entire valve exercise and workflow. Um, we have some pages here for condition assessment if you want to take advantage of it, and we also have attachments. So this is showing me that it automatically creates the torque chart and it inserts it as an attachment to the form. Um, I can take pictures. So if I had my camera, which my laptop doesn't, I'm going to go to my file system and just select. Uh, 
pictures and then save it. So now it's listed as I have three valves that have been operated. Now, as soon as my laptop syncs with the cloud, which can be set to happen every minute, or you can turn it off and only synchronize when a person presses trigger sync, all of this information is going to be visible to the um, Trimble Unity web supervisor. They would see all of the different valves that have been inspected. Um, now, um, I mentioned before, before, let me trigger this sync. So I'm going to upload that to the cloud. Um, so what it's doing right now, it's a, so you can set this to happen at a, at a user-defined interval, or you can do it whenever it's just a manual synchronization. So anything that you've done since the last time you synced, that's all that it's sending up. So it's very small packets of data. Um, I mentioned before that a work order can have uh, attachments listed to it. So this is, this is an example of that SOP document. So the person in the field can have any of those attachments. I, I should have done that, this at the beginning of the of the mobile app but so this is just a pdf showing you all of the details about that particular um uh, exercise so i'm going to go back here to um the web application i can go to that particular job uh, and i'm able to see once once it's done i'm able to see the location of all of the valves that have been exercised so this is showing me almost in near real time of exactly so i'm seeing what's happening almost live while somebody's out in the field doing using Trimble Unity Mobile, I can see that here in the interface. Okay, uh, we have just a couple more minutes and then we're gonna turn it over some questions and answers. Uh, I just wanna show you a couple of the different ways that you have to, to create a, a, a valve inspection job. So this is Trimble Unity and I'm already seeing my existing uh, um, valve, so I mean job. But we have a nice uh, search tool. It's very easy to use. So there's a couple of different ways that you can search in Unity. One, you can use the, it's embedded with the ArcGIS uh, um, um, geolocator. So if I wanted to go to a valve, or maybe there was some type of activity that needed to happen at an intersection, I could type in an intersection. Oh, I think I'm using the wrong. I might be typing something in. Just just for time, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some some of the valve ones. But that is attached to the valve to to the geolocator. Uh, let's search for valve. I can look for valve number four three six three, and it will zoom me directly to that particular valve. This shows me the GIS attributes of that particular valve. And if I want to create a work order on it, I would select it and say create work order. And this is where I would name the job, uh, assign it to that person, uh, give it a priority, type in notes, what is the projected start or end date. Um, so that's how you would, you would uh, create a work order on a single, single valve, uh, a unique valve. Um, um, if I wanted to do a little bit more, I'm going to do an advanced search. I could click advanced search. And right now I have a saved search that says, I want to look for a uh, water valve where um, operable is equal to false. So basically what this would do is if in my GIS, I have valves that are inoperable or any attribute that's in your GIS, I can search for it through a pretty nice little search tool here. So if I did this, it says there's 64 records in your GIS that say that the valve is not operable. I could select each one of these and I could create a work order. I could um, give it a status, a reason, um, several different things. I'm gonna search for Jeff Smith and I'm going to create that work order. So that's how you would select it based upon a, an advanced search. So I called this job inoperable and if I wanted to see the 64 valves, um, 
that have been flagged as inoperable, they're now a work order for somebody to go out and try to maintain them. Um, another method that you have for being able to create a valve inspection is just using the map. So, if I'm looking at my map and um, I want to select a certain area, let's just say, for example, um, all of the valves in this neighborhood right here. I would use this selection tool and just draw a polygon around it and then select these particular valves and create a work order. Or, or I can visually look at all of the valves and any valve that's gray in this particular demo, this can be, these color symbols can be adjusted by you. Um, I can look at all the valves that are gray, letting me know these are valves that have not been operated during this cycle. And then I could just uh, select them ad hoc, a single one, but you also have your map to be able to create work. So that really wraps it up. I think I'm, I'm right on time here. Uh, I think I took you through all the elements of this. So uh, I'll open this up for questions and uh, I'll turn it back over to you, York. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate you doing so. I have unmuted folks, so if you have questions, um, please feel free to ask those now, Jeff. And you always have the ability to send an email to York or myself. Um, and York, I believe that you're gonna send out some contact information about this. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. Everybody will get a okay. copy of this uh, once we're finished and can certainly interact with us and with Jeff with any questions. I think I've unmuted everybody. If you do have a question or not able to ask it, send me a chat and I'll try to manually do it. Otherwise, I think Victoria is on the call as well. Maybe she can figure out if there's a way I haven't unmuted folks if you'd like to be able to talk. Great. Well, I appreciate everybody attending today. Um, we will be continuing this series. We'll get the recording out to you within the next few days, and then we'll get an announcement out our next one about every three weeks. Uh, over this summertime period, we'll be having a webinar. I think our next one will be on TerraFlex, and then we'll follow one after that with another Trimble Water uh, segment. But we appreciate your time today, and feel free to do send us any questions, and have a good afternoon. Thanks, everybody.